Hello viewer, welcome back to 54A. I've got a lump of ash here, uh, never worked with ash before. I uh, thought so I'd just make a, a simple bowl out of it. So uh, I've marked off the centre. I'm going to do my usual thing of drilling down with the force and a bit so I can put it in the uh, pin drawers. So I'll get on with that and get it prepared onto the lathe and we'll take it from there. Right, it's all chucked up. I've just started uh, getting it perfectly round now with my bowl gouge. Um, this is just a method that I found I, I like doing with it with the pin jaws, and I put a mortise then in this end uh, instead of having a tenon on. It just saves having to reverse the bowl when it's finished and, and get rid of the tenon if there isn't one there to get rid of. So uh, it's just my method, you know, it's whatever you prefer really, it's just I found I, I do like this way. But if you haven't got the pin jaws or any other way of mounting it like that, then you can't do it I suppose. Well, there probably is a method, but I, I don't know it. Anyway, I'm just going to carry on rounding it up. nearly there, just a little bit of a flat spot there. Uh, won't take a minute with it, I hope. Keep the tool rest nice and close. That's better. Now I'll just face it off and put the mortise in this end. I don't ever use these calipers just to check the mortise, so they're always set about the, at the same thing. That'll do nicely, I think. That'll do. Sand it off in there. Just sanded that little bit in there and just round this edge with the, the abronette, which I love actually, it's really nice stuff. I'll put a bit of uh, sanding sealant and a little coat of wax on there and then I can turn it round. Let's get my board. Dribbling all over my 
to lie his bed. Nice grain to this ash. Should show up really nicely when it's when it's finished. Scotch pad. Yep, yeah, that's dry. Doesn't take a minute to dry. Some people use a couple of coats of sanding sealant, it's your preference entirely, I only tend to use the one, uh, it seems enough, especially on this wood, it's just nice and smooth, and a quick coat of wax. I keep my uh, little rag for putting it on in the tin of wax itself doesn't dry out then keeps it nice and supple that bit done I'll just take this corner off while I've got it this way round Just left a bit there, I'm going to just make a, a little foot out of that area there. So I'm going to just go in with a square scraper, I think. it off the table or whatever it's going to go on, dust in the lid or whatever. If it's gone, feels like it. Yep. Right, let's carry on now, just rounding it off a bit more.
that's got about the shape that I want on that bottom corner so uh, I'll just get some sanding gear on that now I've also got if I can find it one of these sorby sanding things there, there. I don't know, sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't. It's a um, funny little thing. As you see, it, I mean, it's supposed to spin round with the wood. If you've got to get it at the exact perfect angle for it to work, uh, you might as well just get one of these. And uh, hang on, where is it? That's it. You might as well get one of these and bung it in your electric drill. I think you get just as good a result with it without wasting. I don't know, what was it? Thirty quid, something like that. Right, carry on sanding this with the abronet anyway and then I'll uh, spin it round. Right, decision to make here, to scorch or not to scorch. Never tried scorching before, might as well give it a go. That's quite pretty, isn't it? Another quick sand down there because the scorching's raised all the grain. But just with some fine stuff, I think. Uh, let's try a bit of 400 first, I think. Bit of six hundred. <clears throat> Turn it round now, change my uh, jaws over, so that'll be a few minutes. So I'll catch up with you later. There we go, all turned over. There's a lot of facing to do on here. It's quite deep here and shallower there. But uh, once we get on with that, take a bit more off here um, and away we go. take it down a bit further yet. Yep, still got to come off then as it's uh, it'll only fall off if I don't get rid of it. I can find what you're talking to 
use. Where is it gone? Silly me, put it back on the rack. go with a good sanding actually but I'll take a little bit more off I think that'll do okay I'm gonna start hollowing that out now put a few of these away first Check the height. A little bit higher. That should do. I have to swing the camera over a bit now. any help to anybody yeah uh, what I'm doing here I'm starting off with the tool level and as I just touch in with the tip and start moving it round and tilt it to about 45 degrees so in level start your cut tilt it round and then follow the bevel round to the end straight in tilt <laughs> And round like that. That's what I've been taught, and that's what seems to work. if you can do it in one sweep fine you know all the better uh, I am practicing that all the time as you can see um, yeah nice steady cuts mm -hmm. not putting too much pressure on um, the shavings that come off here are quite warm actually so I might take a tip out of Robbie the wood turners book and uh, stick a glove on I think anyway uh, dinner time so I'll see you later that was a nice dinner. <coughs> Well, I think you get the idea, so I'm going to carry on with this now. Uh, it's just a matter of a, the same old thing, so I won't bore you with that too much, hopefully. And uh, I'll get on and hollow a bit more out, and then I'll get back to you later. Okay, I'm more or less at where I want to be with this now. I'm just finishing it off with a scraper. There's a little ridge there that I want to get rid of, so I'll have a go at that. seems to have got rid of that. 
tiny little bit on the side there. A very quick go at that one. Right, I'm going to start sanding this down now uh, using the Abronet again. I have changed the actual profile of the outside of the bowl. It was a bit too fat at the bottom, so I've narrowed it out quite a bit. It's one of those things that just evolves as you're doing it. Um, so I'm going to start sanding the usual stuff. Dust extractor on again, so sorry for the noise. That'll do. Now then, a little bit then, no, no, that edge one's doing, hang on a sec. Just getting rid of as many shavings as I can in the general area because uh, I'm going to have a, another go at scorching now. So I'll put that there just in case. I know it's only wood, but it's a bit of protection against any shavings that may be around. Okay, now it just needs a final sand down, just let that cool off a bit. Um, <laughs> I don't know about you, but this ash, it just, with the grain on it, it's just crying out to be scorched. I um, don't know if you can see that alright, but uh, it's beautiful grain. It doesn't really show up so much if you haven't scorched it. So I'm going to give that a final sand down now through about um, 200 odd. Onwards, let's have a look what we've got. Yeah, say so 240 up to 600. I'm just experimenting here, I've never done it before, so uh, we'll see what happens. Just 
very gently. You don't want to remove all the scorching that you've just done, but you just want to flatten the grain down again. Three twenty. Four hundred. And finally with six hundred. Do that nice smooth finish again. Still very warm this book is. Let's see what that looks like now. That's amazing. I really like that. That's gonna take a bit of cooling off. There's a, there's a couple of little cracks appeared where there's obviously a branch here. Um, they're very very shallow, it's the heat that's done it. I'm not bothered about that really. I just think it looks really good. So I'm going to let that cool off, give it the usual polishing treatment and uh, take it out and I'll uh, show it you when it's finished. Right, uh, finished it, I'll show you in a minute. We've got um, a newspaper in the UK, um, well, it's, most people call it a newspaper, uh, it's called The Sun and every time we get a hot day their headline is, or used to be, Phew, what a scorcher. So um, I'm going to nick it off them. Let's get the camera. Phew, what a scorcher. How about that? My first attempt with ash. My first attempt at scorching. And uh, oh, I'm so pleased with that. Oh, that's come out a treat. So if, if you want to have a go at scorching, get yourself a piece of ash because look at the grain on that. It's beautiful. I'm really pleased with that. Um, there you go. If you're going to use a blowtorch, be careful. Don't be stupid with it. Um, otherwise, have fun. Yep, I really like that. There you go, viewer. That's it again, um, squeezing some videos in this week. Um, I've got another lump of ash, actually, slightly bigger. And I've also got, hang on. I've got this chunk of black walnut. Um, I haven't got. A, I don't want to spoil it. I haven't got a clue what to do with it yet. It's it's a bit uneven, slightly narrower on the one side. But um, if you've got any suggestions, let me know because I'd like to make something really nice out of it. I also, on my travels, bought a piece of Indonesian rosewood. Which is lovely. Make a nice, probably make a nice finial. <laughs> Usual purple heart. I usually get a chunk of this when I when I go to the Ockendons. I use that for inlays a lot and uh, segmented stuff. And I came across this paduk, I think they call it. So uh, orangey red. Never used that before either. So I've got some thinking to do with these little chunks of exotic wood and uh, there's a big lump of ash that I've got as well but to say any suggestions what to do with this little chunk of American walnut I think it was what was it called American uh, black walnut yeah black American walnut uh, just let me know uh, be nice to hear some suggestions so that's it viewer back to my little scorcher Thanks very much for watching again and uh, I'll see you soon. Take care now. Bye.